Metro Ghetto. Hi everybody, and welcome to this week's vlog. Looks like I'm doing something. I'm not, I'm just sat down. <laughs> Full disclosure. Right, let's kick it off, shall we? I have just got back from the charity shop. I've had a nice, successful hunt. I've had a relatively couple of dry weeks with charity shop hunting, so yeah, it was nice to have a nice find. As you can see, I am currently in the process of playing the Red Dead Undead Nightmare. I'm enjoying it, but I think I've kind of forgot how many bugs and little issues there are with open world games of this era so many times that I've had to like restart missions through no fault of my own because it just hasn't registered that I've done something or there's been like yeah like just some sort of issue or bug but generally uh, it's a really fun game and uh, I will see myself playing through it but yeah um so I've just got back from the charity shop I'm gonna insert that footage now so this has just come in And here is the fruits of my labor. So these are all the games I picked up at the charity shop. Tomb Raider, um, there's a couple of other PS1 games, but uh, I just decided to pick that one up, it's four pound trading. And then a load of DS games. Uh, Nintendogs trades in for five pounds, so it's nice that there was a couple of versions of these. Um, I think the best return was Cooking Mama. I think the six pound trading on that. Sonic's got five pound trading. I think the Tamagotchi game maybe has got four pound. I think what I did was I picked up I think three of these games um, at £1.95 each and she said do you not want any more and I said to be honest it's not worth me picking them up because they're not worth um, me doing so because a lot of these kind of trade in for like £1.50 or £2 so there's no point me buying them for £1.95 right and she kind of just said to me oh do you want the rest of 50p each so I ended up paying a total of £11 uh, for all of these and there's 36 pounds 60 pence in trade credit here so that's a decent return um i'm going down to cx tomorrow so yeah we'll be cashing them in and cx actually sell all of these for 81 pounds so yeah quite the markup from 11. Uh, i'll be heading to cx tomorrow as i say and i'll be taking the little um few games that i found on last week's vlog as well so we should get a half decent credit note for that um, as always my credit notes are already uh spoken for we've already got loads of plans i have had a few box only games recently um and if you guys watched wednesday's video you will know so i'm looking to get a few carts uh, added to my collection so these vouchers are going to help with that no end uh, there's loads planned for this week's vlog there could even be as many as three uh, charity shop hunts uh plus loads more stuff we'll get into that another day i'm going to uh, enjoy my time in the red dead undead nightmare i'll catch you soon Okay, so I am on my way to my weekly CEX and local charity shop hunt. I've got my big bag full of goodies to take into CEX. It should give me quite a nice voucher with which we can order something and hopefully that'll arrive this week. I have actually got a couple of unboxings that we'll be looking at today when I get back from this hunt, so stay tuned for that. But yeah, I'm sat in traffic right now, hence why I'm filming in my car. As always, if I see anything in the charity shops worth showing, if I find anything at CEX, I'll obviously record it. But yeah, let's see what we can find. I've got some bad news. My beloved chicken mayo is no longer a pound. Okay, so I'm just outside OLED phones. Uh, I was told this is the place to go to get my PS4 fixed. If you guys remember, Gibbo from Gib84 very kindly sent me that white PS4 Pro to go in my Kallax unit. Um, it's dead. 
So apparently he's the man to fix it. I've just had a word with him. I'm going to bring it next week. Fingers crossed he'll get it up and running. And then that'll be another white console. Now, I didn't buy anything in CEX, but I did get given a nice gift. Uh, so I'll show you guys that when we get back to the 3.0 on top of the couple of parcels that we've got to open but yeah man nice day sun shining get myself a little drink something to eat and then uh, we'll go back so it's that time again cut the grass cut the hedge and that is that so now i'm going to do the customary spend five minutes admiring my work before the missus hits me with the next job on the ever increasing list let's hide here for a bit Stick kettle on! Okay, as you can see, I am back from a weekly trip to the locals. And whilst I didn't actually buy anything, I did get an amazing gift. And I've got a couple of things that I need to unbox over the last couple of days as well. So, first things first, the gift. My friend, manager extraordinaire, Manesh, at my local CEX branch. I'm running out of superlatives to tell you how amazing this guy is, right? And he's the reflection as to why that local CX branch is so good. I actually made a video once upon a time talking about how much I love that branch, and not just because it's my local, but yeah, I know a lot of people that have since been and have told me they've had similar experiences. When it comes to a manager having passion for video games, retro games, and not only that, but really having customer service and delivering that whenever he can, it just shines through, it really does. And this is just another example of that. Obviously, I had the recent debacle, shall we say, with my R-Type 3, and he gifted me this today. This is a very rare piece. Let me just carefully unfold it. This is the poster that comes with the R-Type 3 game. And you just don't find these, right? This is something that is just very hard to find. What is a 30 year old piece of paper? Now, it is slightly sun faded and it's certainly not mint, but I'm so happy to have this. I mean, this is just one of the things that you're just never gonna find, right? This is never gonna become available uh, individually for sale. Uh, you will probably find one in like an ultra complete version of the game if you want to spend, you know, £300 plus. But yeah, what a great guy. He actually took this off his wall. He had this on his wall and he took this off to gift it to me. And yeah, just speaks volumes about the man. So Manesh, as always, can't thank you enough, my friend. Uh, yeah, really, really happy to add that. And that, you know, it sort of sums up really what's happened with that game. Um, it started off quite low, as you'll know if you've watched the story or watched the video as to how CX sent it me, but how they've since dealt with it and how um, I've received that today, it's really turned a negative into a positive and that's kind of what this hobby's all about, right? And collectors looking after each other and yeah, it's a beautiful thing. So we're gonna move on now to uh, a pickup that I've had. This is a random one, right? Uh, I was recently in a CEX and I'd never even heard of this game. I'd never seen it before and it caught my eye and I looked at it and you know what, when I was looking at the pictures on the back of the box, it reminded me of a link to the past. And I thought, I've never heard of this game before. But it really does look like that in terms of the visuals. It was like £5.50 and I went on eBay and I made an offer and they pretty much accepted straight away £4. So I was like, well I'll save the pound fifty. Um, so yeah, let's get into it, shall we? And that is Adventure Time. The Secret of the Nameless Kingdom. This is a 2014 top-down adventure puzzle game developed by WayForward Technologies. Um, this game was once upon a time taken off the Xbox Store, but it is backwards compatible, so you can play it via the Xbox One. I think it is now available again on those Xbox stores. And uh, As you'll be seeing on screen now, the visuals and the way in which this game plays are so much like A Link to the Past. And when I had a quick look at this game um, prior to opening this, so I could tell you guys a bit about it, it actually referenced its similarities to that game. Now, for me, A Link to the Past is my favourite game ever made. And I've never heard of this game, right? So I'm certainly not expecting it to be anywhere near that level. But it just sort of intrigued me. And for £4, I definitely wanted to pick it up. Uh, it's complete, as you can see. So, yeah, I'll be trying this one out really soon. And I'll uh, give you guys my thoughts on it. But, yeah, just strange that uh, a game that reminds me so much of my favorite game ever was one that i've never heard of let me know in the comments if you've played this game and if it's worth me putting much time into okay and now we've got a cex lottery it is a lottery but it isn't a lottery it's one of them i'll be honest with you it's a cartridge it's not like opening nintendo cardboard right i mean i was gonna say how wrong can cex get it but that's a dangerous game to play right um it might not even be the right game <laughs> Let's see what's in here, shall we? A 
Okay, so we have, it's the right game, Ghoul Patrol. So I'm not going to go into this game too much because if you watch Wednesday's video, which you have, you haven't, I implore you to do so. I sort of went into detail looking at this game and a couple of other games that I've added to my collection recently that I've bought box only. Um, and then I sort of explained as to how I save a lot of money collecting by then piecing together those and adding cartridges and manuals, etc. down the road. Uh, CEX had this one in stock. Um, I can't remember exactly how much it was, but I'll pop it on the screen now. And uh, yeah, decent condition. It looks like it could do with a white, but... I pieced this whole thing together for I think roughly £50 and they sell this for £95 off memory so £45 saving, pretty much half price, really really happy with that. I'll put a link in the description below to that video if you haven't seen it uh, but now I just need to pick up the Boogerman cart to go with that and of course the fabled um, Terra Enigma which is obviously an expensive cartridge, that's like £100 plus just for the cartridge so yeah uh, I might have a lead on that. Speaking of that, um, I've actually might go on a, a bit of a special game hunt tomorrow. Uh, it's not definite yet, so uh, I'll uh, keep you guys posted in due course. But yeah, at the moment, I might be heading out and do some like, real, real game hunting tomorrow. So watch this space. But yeah, happy with my uh, little acquisitions there. Let's keep it going. Okay, so I'm just getting the competition win sorted out. This is getting packaged up now, and I just want to say, <laughs> this is the last one that I'm signing, okay? I don't want to be responsible for a bunch of people in the future annoyed at whoever this geezer is writing all over their games. So, yeah, <laughs> no more signings, but we will have another giveaway very soon. Retro Ghetto. Okay, so after a night spent playing Red Dead Undead, it's game hunt day and I'm excited about this one. Uh, basically, I'm heading out to my favourite video game store, Vintage Gamer. Uh, I've got a warm lead that they've got something that I want. There's no guarantee I'm going to be leaving with it because it's an expensive item and I'm hoping I can do a deal. Nick's usually fantastic with me, we usually thrash out a deal between us after hours of much conversation later uh, it's always great seeing nick um, but i've got a few things i'm taking and um, hopefully we can do some trades on last time i went i had this realization that i'd never visited the cex there's a cex in hales owen very close to vintage gamer and for some reason i've just never been so we're going to go there first and hopefully we're also going to have time to go and see rich old school gaming another fantastic video game store which is literally 10 minutes down the road so whenever i'm down that way i like to visit both stores it's just a case of time time might be against me i've got to grab little man from school today so yeah we've got quite a lot to fit in but i'm very excited about this one as far as video game hunts go going to two of the best stores in the country and a brand new cex don't really get too much better than that so hopefully we can fit everything in hopefully i'm going to come away with not only that item that i'm going for but maybe some other stuff as well so i'll see you when we get there as coolio would say Fifteen minutes into the journey and i realized i forgot my wallet that's half an hour off the game hunt Okay, so I finally made it to Hales Owen after leaving my wallet, getting caught short, the inevitable speed restrictions on the A38, the inevitable accidents on the M6. But yeah, I'm gonna hit up a couple of charity shops, then we're gonna to fly to this local CEX. Um, I wanna to get to Vintage Gamer, so I'm not gonna spend too long here, but yeah, we'll go and have a look. So I've just come from that charity shop, and there's one there, one there, one there, one there, and there's CEX, so everything's in a tight little strip, so it can be real quick. I'll hopefully find something. Okay, so I'm empty-handed coming out of Hales Owen, which is no surprise when you've got um, as many great video game stores as I've got around here. Um, there'll be a lot of people that will do this sort of hunting uh, on their behalf, and a lot of people that are obviously interested in the hobby generally. Uh, the CX was quite small, the staff in there were pleasant enough, but it's one of them where they have a very small amount of retro. And what they did have was behind the counter, so it's quite awkward to even look at it, let alone film it. Um, so yeah, it was... Uh, 
not the best CX store I've ever been in, if I'm being honest. There's even quite relatively low value things that were sort of like out of reach. Um, but yeah, um, a CX can only be as good as what's in it on each given day, I suppose. Uh, right, let's get over to the main event. Let's go and see Nick at Vintage Gamer and see if I can hash out. Okay, we've made it. Vintage Gamer. Is it legit? Yeah, but you shouldn't just have it sat on the floor by the door, Nick. Like, it it's, because... like it's flipping FIFA 5, do you know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> You come this way past the wall of consoles. Toilets down here. I mean, look at this. Every room you pop in, it's just stacked full. And this is why I love this shop. Okay, so I've just got out of Vintage Gamer and even by Vintage Gamer's standards, it was stacked. They must have had loads of recent collections coming in. He said there's a guy that's been taking loads of stuff in every week and yeah, there's some high, high-end items in there. I timed it right in terms of the amount of stock. Didn't time it right in terms of how busy they were. I got here like 10 minutes after it opened and I was about third or fourth in the queue. And yeah, but always a great time, always fantastic seeing Nick. I've got some really nice bits as well as what I came for, right? I managed to get a great deal trade us some bits here now tell you guys everything uh, when we get back i think i should have enough time to get to old school gaming as well so yeah today's proven to be an epic hunt let's go there now what a beautiful day the sun is shining i'm on my way to a second fantastic retro video game store life's good right now got a bag full of stuff in the car that i'm looking forward to showing you guys and yeah man the hunt's not over yet let's see what else we can find Oh, 
mate. Okay, I'm back, and to quote the Tiger King, I'm never gonna financially recover from this. <laughs> I bought a lot of games, but I got some really nice stuff. But let's go back and take a look. Retro Ghetto. As you can see, we are back in the 3.0 after what I can only describe as being an almost perfect video game haunt. When you go to two of the best shops in the country, coming back with this much great stuff and having a fantastic day with fantastic weather, I don't think you can ask for much more than that. We've got so much to get through, so we're going to jump straight in. The only thing I want to say before I jump into it is I've also had two parcels arrive, so the day got even better. I got home and the postman had been, but I'm going to open them on next week's video simply because I've got so much to get through. And full disclosure, Ghetto Vlogs, living up to the Ghetto name, I'm actually propping my camera up on the two boxes to film this segment. So yeah, we'll open them early on next week's vlog, so keep it locked to the Retro Ghetto for that one because it's a nice CX roulette and a limited run style company game and I'm excited to open both of them to be honest but yeah we'll get to that next week there's enough to be cracking on with right here and right now and Vintage Gamer I often say how it's one of my favourite video game stores and it definitely did not disappoint today uh, they have recently been buying collections off somebody that obviously had a vast collection as you saw in the footage all those amazing Game Boy games and other high end items there was even like um, the Mega Man game on the Mega Drive, Wily Wars, just sat on the floor. I think you probably heard on the footage I was laughing, saying you can't just have this lay around on the floor like it's a FIFA game or something. It didn't have the manual, but still a very, very high-end um, and very sought-after Mega Drive game. Which just goes to show you how much stock is in Vintage Gamer right now. So if you're in that area, make sure you get yourselves down there and yeah, you definitely won't come away empty-handed. Also want to give a big shout-out to the young lad that I met while I was in there who kept kind of double taking and he said he actually got into collecting free watching my videos in lockdown and he actually learned about Vintage Gamer from one of my shop tours so it was kind of like a full circle moment seeing this guy there so if you're watching mate massive shout out it was nice to meet you but let's get straight into it then the reason I went there the warm lead that I had because I was aware that this was in stock through a picture that I seen on social media and somebody reached out to me on Instagram and said have you seen this and whilst I had originally seen the pictures, I'd missed this little piece of it, and that is Terranigma. So if you've watched my last couple of videos, you'll know that I bought the box for this. I paid like £88 for the box, 
and then it's just simply a case of piecing this one together. This is like a three, four hundred pound Super Nintendo game now to get it complete, so I wanted to sort of Frankenstein my way to a complete copy. One, to keep the prices down, but also to sort of make it more manageable. Rather than paying all that up front, I will spread the cost over three instalments, if you like. So, uh, Nick did me a great deal on this. He had it at a hundred pounds, which is significantly cheaper than what CX is selling it for. It's a really nice clean cartridge but not only that I actually traded in quite a few bits to get this uh, at a greatly reduced cost. I'm currently working my way through the old Retro Gato 2.5. I've got to get that cleared out. It's taken me a long time. There's so much to work through. So I took Nick um, the Metroid Prime GameCube promotional display piece that I had. Uh, I just don't have room for it in here and there's no point in it just gathering dust. As I say I need to get that room clear. So I took him that and I also went with some other bits and bobs and a, and a PlayStation 2 console and yeah, just random things. What I'm tending to do at the moment is whenever I go to different shops and stores, I'm tending to just go in that room, grab a few bits, take them with me and see if they want them and ultimately that then helps me spend less cash on these items. So yeah, it's like win, win, win. And even the missus is happy because the room is slowly, slowly getting clearer. You can start to see carpet in there now, so that's always a positive sign. But yeah, really delighted with this. I've now got the car and the box for what is a very, very high-end game. And I'm going to be playing through Terra Enigma very soon. From what I understand, it's like quite a big game, right, with it being a, a, an RPG. So my plan is to play through Zelda when that comes out. I'm going to be giving that a lot of time. I'll put over 100 hours into Breath of the Wild, so I'm expecting similar, if not more, from this one. And then once I finish that, I'm going to play through Terra Enigma. That's the plan as it stands. But really, really happy to be adding this to the collection. Now I've got the cartridge, I'm going to allow myself to put Terra Enigma onto the SNES wall. Next up, and one of the things I always say on this channel, if I can find a complete box Super Nintendo game for £10 or less, I don't already own, I'm buying it. And that's what happened with this next one. One of my favorite games growing up, without a doubt, is International Superstar Soccer Deluxe. Now, I already own International Superstar Soccer, the yellow box. Yeah, I've got it set there. I already own the yellow box, the standard version on the Super Nintendo. So this was just one that I wanted and for £10, as I keep saying, I'm going for as many Super Nintendo games as I can get. By no means is this in mint condition. It's a little bit rough around the edges, but what is a relatively low value game? This will clean up. It'll be nice in a box protector. And I'm actually really looking forward to playing this one and taking that walk down memory lane, right? And going through those old teams and getting reacquainted with something that I put so much time into in my youth. This next one is one that Nick let me have for free. It's one that I saw at the end um, as I was just coming to the conclusion of my Game Hunter Vintage Gamer and he just said, oh, I'll just have it. So that is uh, Beyond Two Souls. This is the Steelbook version. Uh, it comes in like a nice Steelbook. It's a really interesting looking game. It's one of them that's on my backlog, right? It's definitely one I'm gonna get to one day. It stars Ellen Page and Willem Dafoe and it just looks really interesting. Um, almost like a playable movie from what I can see. I did already have the standard edition, so what I am going to do is I'm going to give this one away to one of you guys. Um, rather than doing what I normally do and saying let me know in the comments if you want it and then drawing a random one, it always takes too much for me to try and collate it all, right? I don't have the time. So what I'm going to say is, guess in the comments who my favourite football player was growing up. First person to get it right. I have one guess each. First person to get it right. If you want this game, I'll send it out to you. I mean, even if you don't want the game, just have a guess, right? And then we can do with this game what you will, right? But yeah, uh, if you want it, guess my favourite football player in the comments below and uh, I'll get it sent out to you if you want it. Okay, so as I already spoke about, some of the amazing collections that have been bought into Vintage Gamer recently. The highlight was probably that those boxes full of Game Boy games. There was like three boxes full. Primarily old school Game Boy, but there's also sort of Game Boy Colour and things like that. I love buying Game Boy. It's one of them things that I love collecting for. I love the artwork, I love displaying it, but I don't necessarily go out my way to hunt for it, if that makes sense, in the same way that I hunt for Mega Drive and Super Nintendo. It's one of them things It's sort of like as and when. When I see box complete Game Boy games, that's when I tend to buy them as opposed to sort of like going out my way to search for them on eBay and other sites and whatnot. Uh, there is actually a Game Boy game that I'm after currently. Um, there's a story behind it, but we're gonna get to that and I'll talk about it more once I pick it up. But going through this box and looking at all these fantastic condition Game Boy games, and they were, they've clearly been in somebody's collection that loved them. They're all individually uh, in box protectors, all complete, all in great condition. I knew I had to leave with one, but I don't really know the Game Boy market. So I'm sort of going through all these games, picking them up, talking to Nick, and Nick's like just shaking his head because he knows that I don't want to be spending large amounts of money on a game, right? So he's like, 
I'll just put it back. You're gonna pick up another one, he'd be like. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, eventually I settled on a game which I wanted and was affordable. I got this for £30, which is a fantastic price because I think that's pretty much where CEX are at on it, but it's not in stock. And this is in like collector's condition complete, right? If you got this from CEX on a CEX lottery, you would be delighted. Um, it's sort of like everything that I love from video games. and uh, It's like Nintendo Cardboard, Capcom, Disney, a cartoon that I used to watch. So I'll throw it all together. What do you get? Tailspin. But yeah, this is in really, really nice condition. And this was originally a 1991 uh, Nintendo release and it was later ported to the Game Boy in 1992. It's just a slightly stripped down version from that original NES release and it's basically like a shmup. It's almost like a shmup com platformer. You'll be seeing the footage on screen now. Uh, but yeah, one that I'm really looking forward to playing. Full disclosure, I don't own a Game Boy. I don't really play handhold gaming at all. There'll be occasional nights where I'll take my Switch to bed or whatever, but generally speaking, I play my Game Boy through my uh, Super Game Boy adapter on the Super Nintendo. I prefer to do my gaming on televisions. That's just, you know, the way I like to do my gaming. But yeah, um, very, very happy to add this. I mean, just look at that artwork, right? And yeah, I can see myself starting to gear towards Game Boy collecting. There's just something about this era and Nintendo cardboard, right? And yeah. I'm, I'm trying to avoid that slippery slope of becoming an avid Game Boy collector, but I just love adding to it. I love displaying them. There's something about these boxes and how uniform they are with the Game Boy down the side. And yeah, it's definitely something I can feel myself getting pulled into as time goes on. That's all my pickups from Vintage Gamer. I think you guys will agree. I did very, very well. Uh, and as I say, it didn't really cost me too much because I traded in stuff that was just languishing in the 2.5. And yeah, I could have drawn the line there. I would have been happy to come home with that. But when I'm in that part of the world, I feel like I have to go to Old School Gaming as well because it's another fantastic video game store. I was thinking on the way home, like, oh, I wish these stores were closer because they're sort of like an hour and 15 minutes depending on traffic. And there's usually traffic, right, when you go into that part of the country. Um, so anywhere between an hour and 15 to an hour and a half away from me. So it's, quite, it's pretty much a day out, right, by the time you've been there and then the journey home. But then I was thinking it's probably a good job that it isn't closer because if these were like 15, 20 minutes away, I'd probably be there spending money every day. So the fact that it's a bit of a journey away kind of makes me go, I don't know, three, four, five times a year. And yeah, it's probably a blessing and it almost makes it more special, right? When you don't go like every other week. So, so as I was saying, I had to go and see Richard Old School Gaming whilst I was there. I'm lucky to have a fantastic relationship with both Nick at Vintage Gamer and Richard Old School Gaming, both great guys. And I love going into those stores, not just to look around, but to chat to them guys and see how business is going and hear about all the video game ownership stories of the last few weeks. And yeah, I love all that. But of course, did not leave empty handed from old school gaming. I picked up some really nice games from there as well. The first one that caught my eye was Twin Hawk. So this vertical scrolling schmuck was originally a 1989 arcade game by Tower Plan. Um, it takes place at the end of an alternative World War II setting. Um, it was later ported to the Mega Drive, as you can see, and I'm slowly going for... I was going to say all the schmups on the Mega Drive, like a smup subset, but the reality is I'm going for all the schmups on both the Mega Drive and the Super Nintendo. The way it's going, that's kind of the way I'm heading. I'm not actively looking for it, but... Equally, I enjoy playing the games, I enjoy collecting for them, so I'm inevitably getting to that point sooner or later where there won't be many left that I need, and then I probably will start actively trying to find those games that I need to complete those subsets. I think 16-bit era and the 16-bit era of shmups in particular, it's like a very specific genre, and I really enjoy it. So, yeah, this is just another one to add to the list. I don't know if it's a vintage game, but Rich did me an absolutely fantastic price on this. He sold me this for almost half what CEX sell it me for. Um, he did this for me for £20 and it's like £38 at CEX, so yeah, amazing price and one which I will be looking forward to playing through sometime soon. I say playing through, like I'm really good at shmups. Playing, not playing through, having a go at, should I say. And the next game to catch my eye was one that I've been hoping I would run into at some point. It's one of them games that I've kind of, whenever I've been going anywhere recently, I've been seeing if this title was there because I've wanted to pick it up for some time. Uh, and that is Wiz and Liz. To give it its full title, it's Wiz and Liz the Frantic Wabbit Wescue. I don't know why you have to say it like Jonathan Ross, but you do. So it's a 1993 platformer developed by Raising Hell Software. And what sets this apart from other sort of standard platformers of the time is that there's not much combat in this one. I think maybe uh, a couple of bosses, but otherwise it's more of a sort of a collectathon. I think it's more of a timed game from what I understand. I've never played it. 
but I think you sort of have to collect a certain amount of things within a certain amount of time and that's where the challenge comes in this game as opposed to the sort of standard uh, combat of enemies that you have to kill throughout. One that I'm really excited to play, I love my 90s uh, platformers of this era, I mean it's a good job right because there's a lot of them on the systems that I like to collect for. Just one that I was hoping to pick up when I saw it, and for £10, I was definitely not going to leave it there. Right, so next up, what do you get if you cross everything that I love? I'm talking video games, I'm talking 90s, I'm talking 16-bit, I'm talking cartoons, I'm talking toys, and you put it all into one package, you get this. Mighty Max. So The Adventures of Mighty Max was developed by the British studio WJS Design and published by Ocean as a 1994 side-scrolling platformer. This is actually based on the cartoon, The Adventures of Mighty Max, but for me, my nostalgia doesn't come from the cartoons. Uh, I do remember seeing it as a child growing up, but I don't have avid memories of it. For me, it was more the toys. I had the grey skull, um, like the little playset, you'd open it up and there was a little Mighty Max in there, and I have such fond uh, very vivid memories of being a child and getting that toy and playing with it that with me having a passion for both video games and toys this was a game that's been on my radar for quite some time it's just finding it at the right time and at the right price and as I say Richard did me a fantastic deal he did this with me for 20 pounds as well so this was definitely the right time and the right price to pick this one up and yeah just one that I felt like I had to have in my collection toys is a hobby of mine that I really am enthusiastic about I love toys, I watch a lot of um, YouTube toy content, there's some fantastic UK YouTubers uh, out and about when it comes to toys and live streams and all sorts. I just don't have the room to display them so I only dip my toes in, right? I, I find it difficult to display toys, they're not as clean and as sort of like um, neat uh, in terms of their aesthetic as video games are, which you can line up and alphabetical order and... Uh, yeah, I just find it a lot easier to display and create video games than I do toys. I feel like if you have too many, it can become messy. Um, and it's not the look that I want for my room. But I certainly enjoy them from afar. I'm tending to learn now in my mid-30s that you can't collect everything that you enjoy, right? I, I finally learnt that. Um, but yeah, this kind of goes away to scratching that itch for me. And it's brought back real memories of me and playing with that Mighty Max figure. So it's just one I, I've been intrigued by. A uh, standard 90s platformer. Things about 90s platformers, whether they're the best ones or the worst ones, I just always think there's an element of them that I enjoy. It just takes me back to that more innocent time and I'm looking forward to playing this one. So yeah, in many ways, as I say, the perfect video game hunt. I mean, I did not expect to come away with all this. I was hoping to come away with this. Everything else is just an absolute bonus. And I want to give a massive shout out to both Nick and Rich at their respective video game stores. Two fantastic people with two fantastic shops. And if you're ever in the Briley Hill or the Hales Owen area of Greater Birmingham, make sure you go and check them out because, well, you've seen the footage. You don't need me to sell it. Just go and have a look and you would definitely not believe in empty handed. Guys, that's going to do it for me for this week. There's so much to be cracking on with on next week's vlog. It's almost overwhelming. I've got piles and piles of games behind this sofa that I need to go through, clean, get put away. I've got loads of jobs I'm going to be tackling in the games room. I've been neglecting um, the, the games room since I sort of my Kallax unit out, right? That kind of put me off for a couple of weeks, but now it's time to scratch that itch again. Get back into working on this room to making it perfect and yeah there's definitely a few jobs that I want to be getting on with so as always a massive thank you to everybody that's taken the time to watch these vlogs and especially ones that take the time to watch this long make sure you have your guess in the comments as to what my favorite footballer was growing up and you can win yourself a copy of that game but as always play your games keep it retro I'll see you all on the next one take care retro ghetto <laughs>